Pal versus Alabama. On March 25, 1931, nine African American boys were riding the rails from Tennessee. While on the train, they got into a fight with six white men. The nine African American boys ended the fight by throwing the five of the six white men off the train. The train stopped in Scottsboro, Alabama in lieu of the fight. Once there, Victoria Price and Ruby Bates, two white women who had been on the train, accused the nine boys of raping them. The boys were taken to Jackson County Jail. That night, a mob gathered outside the jail, intending to lynch them. Luckily, the nine youths were well protected. The boys' trial was held on April 6, 1931. The boys were illiterate and had little knowledge about legal matters. Therefore, they were unaware of their right to an attorney. Stephen Roddy stepped in to defend the boys as a favor to the court. He met with the Scottsboro boys for 25 minutes before the trial and encouraged them to plead guilty. The boys were tried in groups. None of the trials lasted longer than a day. Eight of the boys were declared guilty and sentenced to the electric chair. The only one who was spared was 12-year-old Roy Wright because his case ended in a mistrial. The International Labor Defense got involved and demanded a new trial and or an appeal for the boys. The appeal was heard on January 1932 at the Alabama State Court, where they said the boys were denied a fair trial, had inadequate representation, and were not given a true jury of their peers. The Supreme Court agreed that they had not received proper legal representation and were denied due process. The case went back to trial in DeConter, Alabama. Samuel Lipowitz defended them. In this trial, Victoria Price was put on the stand. There, she was shown a model of the train that they had been on. When they asked if this resembled the train where the act had occurred, she declared ignorantly that the train that she had been on was much bigger and that that was just a toy. While Lipowitz questioned her, he tried to prove that the semen sample taken by a doctor from her after the alleged rape might not have been the boys as she had met and engaged in sexual intercourse with her boyfriend on a previous night. He then proceeded to try and prove that she was a bootlegger and a prostitute. Ruby Bates admitted that the rape never occurred and that they never even spoke to the boys while on the train. She then explained that she only said that the boys raped her because Victoria Price told her to say that, telling her that they would be thrown in jail themselves for vagrancy if they did not. The jury declared the boys guilty for the second time with death sentences. A third trial was held. This time, African Americans were allowed on the jury. By this time, five years had passed since the initial arrest. Clarence Watts took over the case as the boys' lawyer. The third trial ended with the boys receiving long years of jail time instead of the death sentence. Then, the charges were dropped. Four of the boys were freed. Four served long years in prison, and one, Ozzie Powell, had to go to jail for 20 years for assaulting an officer while in custody. The main constitutional question that the case brought up was, were the accused denied their right to a fair trial? This question was taken into consideration because they were not given a fair and unprejudiced trial, they were denied the right of counsel and adequate preparation for the trial, and they were tried by a jury of people, who, none of whom were the same race as they were. The impact of the case established a right to counsel for federal and state courts. 
the end.